It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was. <laughs> okay, with apologies to Dickens, this should really start off with. It was a really good time. It was an even more fantastic time. What am I talking about? Two images of M101, the pinwheel galaxy. This was an image I took of M101, taken from my new location in the Shenandoah Valley. I was super excited to get this result. It was among the best images I've produced, and the amount of detail this small refractor can provide never fails to astound me. Then, I was invited to participate in an imaging team with a system at Sierra Remote Observatory. This was on a much larger telescope, a plane wave 14-inch corrected Dahl Kirkham. If you put my 80 millimeter next to it, it would make my telescope look like a toy. As we were trying to get the system running, we used M101 as a practice target. We actually had a few kinks to work out, so we collected a fair amount of data on M101. And so I decided to process it, even though I literally just completed the M101 shown here. Here's the new version. The detail took my breath away. It was like seeing the galaxy for the first time again. And don't get me wrong, a mother loves all her children, but it's hard not to like this version a little bit more. The detail revealed in this version is just invisible or at best hinted at in the earlier version. So why the difference? Part of his aperture. The Dawes limit on my 80 millimeter refractor is 1.45 arc seconds. In theory, that's the smallest thing the telescope can resolve. On the plane wave, the Dawes limit is 0.33 arc seconds. So this explains it, right? Well, not completely. When you factor in the image scale of the combined telescope and camera, my SV80 ASI 1600 com uh, combination produces an image scale of 1.6 arc seconds per pixel. The combination of the plane wave FLI ML16803 produces an image scale of 0.72 arc seconds per pixel. Both fall well short of the theoretical resolution of the optics but the plane wave FLI combo produces a finer image scale capable of capturing more resolution. However, even that isn't the whole story. Two other factors have an effect. One is tracking accuracy, and the other is the seeing. My SV80 is riding on a Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount, which is a decent quality mid-range mount. The plane wave is on an Astrophysics 1600 GTO. You can see the difference in the guiding scatter plots of the two systems. The 1600 produces a tighter grouping compared to the EQ6R. Also, the seeing at SRO is probably better and more consistent than my seeing at home. Combine all this together, and great equipment in a great location produce a fantastic result. I'm not saying the 80mm refractor is bad. I think that telescope gave me everything it's capable of. It's really not the best instrument for galaxies. It's more suited to large nebulae. But it was galaxy season, and not much else was around to choose from. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. I could get a camera with smaller pixels to use on the SV80, but to do that I'd sacrifice field of view, and on that telescope I value field of view more than I value resolution. There are lots of targets that are too large for the plane wave FLI combination that can only be done by mosaic, a time-consuming and complex technique. But for the SV80, those are the sweet spot. And you really don't need a 14-inch telescope to produce results like this today. With the smaller pixels in today's cameras, a 130 millimeter telescope could give you as much as the seeing in most locations would allow. A 150 millimeter refractor would rival the plane wave FLI combination under most skies. But, in some ways, the star of the show, no pun intended, isn't that the plane wave combination, or the plane wave FLI combination, is so fantastic. It is, no doubt. But the SV80 ASI 1600 combination does such a good job and produces really great images, it won't leave you disappointed. The SV80 has been a 
great telescope to learn imaging on. I've been using it for two years now, and I really haven't been feeling the need to get a larger instrument. So, of course, the universe inter intervened. When a localish Takahashi TOA-130 telescope came on the used market, I couldn't pass it up, especially since the original owner had kept it in pristine condition. It'll be a while before I can actually use it for imaging. I have a reducer and a flattener on order that will be at least a month away, but I'm looking forward to seeing what the new telescope can do here. In the meantime, I'll continue to enjoy what this 80mm can produce and also what that plane wave can do. It really is the best of time.